Hey guys, in this video we'll talk about how to perform function operations. Uh, so if you're given two functions, how can we add them, subtract them, multiply them, divide them? And as we're doing that, how can we find the domains of the new functions that we create? And then towards the end of the video we'll talk about how to find compositions of functions. Let's get started. So th there's five things that we can do that are basic operations whenever we have two or more functions. Uh, we should be able to add functions together, subtract them, multiply them, divide them, and then essentially evaluate them. Uh, under some specific conditions is italicized, and hopefully when we talk about domains, you'll understand you know, what I mean by that. So addition of functions is, is pretty simple, I hope. The notation for this, I'm sure you've seen before, is f plus g of x. And that means that whatever two functions we have, we're adding them. The difference, the notation is f minus g of x, and that means that we're subtracting the two functions. f of x minus g of x. And then for the product, we have f times g of x. That's really another way of writing that is the, the same thing without the dot in the middle. And that just means f of x times g of x. For quotient, things get uh, just a little bit off to where f over g of x is the same as what you would expect it to be, f of x over g of x. But we have this extra assumption here. The reason why this assumption is, is here is because g of x could very well be 0 at some point. So think about the function y equals x squared. y equals x squared is a very nice parabola. And when x is equal to 0, y is 0. Now, if we were dividing some function, let's say 3x, by x squared, we'd have to make sure that we do those computations under some very specific conditions. And those conditions are, well, g of x is not allowed to be 0. So that means we would be able to find the quotient of the two functions as long as the denominator was not 0. And more on that when we get to the examples. For composition of functions, basically we're plugging a function into another function. So this is just taking evaluation of functions one step further. More on this again when we start looking at some examples. So here we have, we're, we're going to be dealing with three of the four major representations of functions. Uh, we have graphical representations, meaning what does it mean to add, subtract, multiply, and divide functions graphically? What does it mean to do that in a tabular form, meaning if you're given a table of values? And then algebraically as well. So if I give you the function equations for two functions, can you add, subtract, multiply, and divide them? And, well, for composition of functions, this, this idea is really just an extension of function evaluation. What I mean by that is, so let's say you're given this function, f of x equals 2x squared plus 5x minus 1. And you were asked to find what f of 4 was. Or another way of asking the same question is to evaluate the function at x equals 4. All you have to do, and you've done this since middle school, is wherever you see an x in the problem, there, there, and there, you replace all those x's with 4's. So mathematically, the proper way to write this is f of x equals our function. f of 4 means wherever we see an x here and here, and well here, we replace it with the number 4. And then once you use order of operations, you can simplify this to get 51. So what that means as an interpretation is if we plug 4 into the function as an input, the function will give us 51 as the output. And then also, here's another example of an evaluation. f of 0 means wherever we see an x, we plug in a 0 into the function, and that cleans up to a negative 1, which means that if we had an input of 0, the output of the function would be negative 1. Now, those two examples were where we were plugging numerical values in, meaning I'm plugging in 0 and I'm plugging in 4. So these are numbers. The, the idea would be the same with fractions as well, but basically those are numerical values. They're, they're numbers. 
we don't have to just plug in numbers. We can evaluate the functions at non-numeric values as well, meaning we can take variables and plug them in. So if we find f of p, we do the same thing. We replace all the x's with the letter p. So now we just get 2p squared plus 5p minus 1. We can do the same thing with, instead of just the letter p, we can do it with t plus w. So the, the idea that I'm trying to get across here is that evaluation of functions is this generic idea that you just plug something in as an input. The function does something to it and then gives you back an output. So in this case, all the x's, there was one here, one here, and one here. All those x's got replaced with t plus w. So t plus w squared is t squared plus 2t t 2tw plus w squared. And then here we can distribute the 5, yielding 5t plus 5w. And we have a minus 1 at the end. At this stage, we can distribute the 2 inside here, which would yield 2t squared plus 4tw plus 2w squared, and then the rest. And here, no, there are no like terms, so you can't really do anything else with it. There's no other cleanup to be done here. Now, Again, I want to extend us further out from evaluating functions at numbers to evaluating functions at non-numeric values, meaning variables. Now, t plus w could very well have been another function. So a natural question that comes up as a result of studying these operations with functions is, well, what happens if we had another function, g of x, and we defined it as 3x minus 5. And we were asked to find what would be f of g of x. So instead of it being f of a number, or f of p, a letter, or f of, excuse me, t plus w, a non-numeric collection of, of symbols, what would happen if we were to find f of g of x? Or, if we were asked to find g of f of x, meaning take the function f and plug it into g. And here, we were taking the function g and plugging it into f. The, the process of doing that is called composition. Basically, it's just evaluation, but you're doing it with functions, so we have a special name for it, and the special name is composition. And we don't do anything differently. We, it's literally the same exact thing that we've done before. Notation here is important because you might see this notation or you might see this notation. The way you read this thing on the left is f composed of g of x. The letter on the outside is always composed of the letter on the inside. So I always think of this as like a sandwich. The sandwich on the outside is composed of the stuff on the inside. So f is composed of g here. On the other hand, g is composed of f because g is on the outside, x is on the outside, and the f is in the middle. So g is composed of f. So f composed of g of x means I have to symbolically take g of x, whatever that function is, and wherever I see an x in the f function, I have to replace it. So my original function for f was 2x squared plus 5x minus 1. So wherever I see an x, there, there, and there, I'm going to replace it with g of x. So g of x is this function 3x minus 5, because that was defined right here. So wherever I see an, uh, an x, which is here and here, oops, here and here, I'm going to replace it with 3x minus 5, which is that function itself. And now we can apply the square formula. We can either apply the formula or we can FOIL this out. I'll leave you guys to verify that this indeed is FOILed correctly. We can distribute the 5 in here and then keep the negative 1 attached. And this algebraically can be cleaned up into 18x squared minus 45x plus, four, plus 24. So this is basically the answer to the question, what would happen if you were to plug in a function g of x into the function f of x? And we can reverse that, uh, that 
activity as well, we can plug F into G instead of plugging G into F. So if we were to take the function g of x, which was 3x minus 5, and plug f into it, that means wherever I see an x, I guess I should write it down. Wherever I see an x here and here, I should replace it with f of x, which is 2x squared plus 5x minus 1. And that's exactly what happened here. So I took this function and I plugged it in for x there. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we could distribute the 3 now. And after uh, order of operations and cleaning up, we end up with this function. So this function is the answer to the question, what happens if you take f and plug it into g? So as we've seen before, or as we've seen hopefully from the last couple of examples, composition is basically just evaluating a function at another function instead of evaluating it at a number or at a non-numeric value. So procedurally, no difference between the stuff that we've done and the new stuff that we're doing.